Hello, my soccer universe. Yeah, time for reviews. Um, this weekend or this week, I'm gonna I'm planning on three. Today's review will center on the Bundesliga, and yes, two Bundesliga jerseys there, but both have lost, so I'm not gonna wear this. Fortunately, I will pack in a whole lot of leagues in and around uh, Germany as well. So I'm wearing Lusk because Austria and Germany, I will always put those two now together. Uh, but we'll also pack in basically all neighboring countries and we will start in the Premier League because I just report the results. I literally did not see anything from the uh, Premier League this weekend because there were so many other interesting games. We had on Saturday Everton beating Crystal Palace 3-1. We had Brighton and Watford um, basement uh, uh, match. Play out a 1 1 draw and Sheffield United gets another win 2 1 um, over Bournemouth. And if we look in the table, I mean, it doesn't really mean much because we need to see how it's evened out. Yeah, City West Ham uh, got cancelled because of the a huge storm uh, that's going all over Europe. We had a little bit of that today as well. So, what that means in the table is that Sheffield now moves up in fifth. Everton also makes a big climb. Um, and most importantly, uh, Brighton, Bournemouth stay kind of on the bottom. Crystal Palace still remains this little, little, little cushion uh, over the relegation zone. And Watford is kind of stuck in there as well. Let's move to the Bundesliga. What a weekend it was. And it, we didn't even get a full game because, again, uh, cancel games due to the storm. This will be a story. Gladbach Köln got cancelled. And that will be interesting when we look at the West Side all on Friday. Uh, Augsburg was for a good half hour the better team. Had chances. Schulz should have scored. Just did not score. And then Chandler... Uh, makes it 1-0 with an admittedly nice com com combination at the half. Uh, Frankfurt at that point got a little bit going. And yes, uh, Frankfurt jersey is one that I'm also kind of on the lookout for. After the half, I mean, it went really fast. Uh, corner by Kostic and Chandler is at the near post, almost at the touchline, and heads it in. Clear goalkeeping, maybe a mistake, but still you have to get it in. So Chandler scores two goals uh, just before and after the half. Andre Silva in the 55th adds a third, and then the game was done and done and dusted. And unfortunately, Augsburg really fell apart at that point because Kostic added two more in the 89th and the 90th. The result that probably was a little bit too high than uh, what it should have been. Wolfsburg 1-1 won -won against Dusseldorf. Uh, kind of a disappointing result, I guess, for both of these. Uh, Hertha, complete disaster. 3-1 loss at home to Mainz. Uh, doesn't get really much worse than that, uh, especially since, you know, Kweis it was the question. He made the 1-0, he made the 2-0. They pulled one back, but uh, in the end, he gets a, gets a third one with a, with a penalty and Mainz wins this rather easily. But the other Berlin team, Union, gets a win at Bremen. Again, you think after this great showing that Bremen had um, in the cup, they will go out and beat Uni Union Berlin. Nope, they are not. 2-0 for Union Berlin. Freiburg gets a rather lucky win over Hoffenheim. Uh, goal scored by penalty. Hoffenheim had many chances, but Freiburg held on and kind of is back a little bit. Uh, they were on the slide. Disappointing result also for Schalke, but... Again, maybe like Hertha, they played uh, a big game uh, mid midweek in the cup with uh, overtime. Managed only a 1-1 against Paderborn, uh, who are in last place. But it's the least the last thing that Schalke really needed um, to have. And then the big one between Leverkusen and Dortmund. I also want to say here... Uh, yes, Leverkusen also 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 played a cup game, but I think the Dortmund one was a little bit more uh, intense. That game was intense, and if you're neutral, uh, this was a fun game to watch. Unfortunately, I didn't see it because I was watching my Lusk. I saw only a little bit, um, but was completely floored when I saw how how the how the game went. Meanwhile, I watched a lot of highlights. Um, I think Gladbach had more of the game, but um, Leverkusen was always dangerous on, on the counter, and Folland makes it 1 in the 20th. However, Hummel can equalize shortly after. Then Emre Can, back in Germany, with a wonderful strike. I mean, this was one of the best strikes of the weekend, makes it 
2-1 for Dortmund. However, Falland again in front before the half manages to equalize. And this is the problem with Dortmund. Uh, going forward, great on the back. They are absolutely terrible. I also have to mention that Holland was playing from the beginning, but honestly it didn't do much. I I am starting to think this was I always said you can score lots of goals against the likes of Augsburg, Köln, and so on. Uh, or, or, or Union. Now with Leverkusen, you play for the first time a real team, and I have to say, I mean, from what no one was really mentioning him much, it was all about uh, Reina and Sancho more than Holland. Holland was just putting himself in position, but without being a real threat out there. Um, so it's two two at the half in the second half. Dortmund actually controls most of the game and that's kind of what I saw after the game ended. There was a goal by Sancho ruled out because there was a foul uh, by Reina near the in the build-up near the center line. It's one of those that the, you just uh, are annoyed that they roll, roll it back that far but then Rafael Guerrero in 64th makes it 3-2 which was at the time really really well deserved. I have a Dortmund cannot hang on and I, to my shame I, I decided okay uh, I need to prepare myself let's have have a quick shower and yeah I enjoyed the warm water too too much because within two minutes Bailey and Lars Bender turned the game around and horrible defending by Dortmund. Leverkusen makes it 4-3 and run away as winners here. Huge blow for Dortmund, especially in, in the light that yeah, if Bayern would win, and Gladbach will probably win against Köln, this really means they lose a lot of ground. Well, that was the other game on Sunday, uh, which was the huge one between Bayern and Leipzig. Um, first half, honestly, was all Bayern. They just couldn't put their uh, dominance into goals. But I have to say, in every regard, this was all Bayern Munich. Uh, to the point where I thought, Pooh, this will be really hard for Leipzig to hang on. But in the second half, they kind of found the gear and they could, you know, it took a life, Leipzig with 30 minutes in the first half and then also the second half to really get themselves, hold Bayern a little bit at bay. And there's really not much that I can say except that uh, Bayern got a penalty that was called off because there was offside in the build-up. Uh, fair, although it was a stonewall pen penalty, and then Leipzig actually was really dangerous in counter attack. And um, Werner needs to convert a chance. There was a two on one, and Kunku plays it to Werner, who has you know, uh, Neuer is not going down. If he hits this right, the, this is the one nil. This was the miss of the weekend because with that one, Leipzig could have made a huge dent uh, in everyone else's title hopes. I think it was pretty clear that both teams are very happy with the nil uh, with 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 the uh, points. If you would have gotten a win out of that, that would have been nice. But overall, I think they were all rather content that they, uh, it stayed this way. And so in the end, yeah, it was pretty clear where this this was heading. There were a few scenes where I really thought. Um, I think in the first half, despite all the band dominance, there was one counter chance where I think Sabitzer placed the ball to the right to Olmo. Uh, that guy cannot run. It completely slow and then just stops running. And uh, also in the second half, there was another one where Werner just needs to put himself in a better position. He could have converted. I mean, uh, that's why I'm saying Werner for, for, for me is the new Sergio Aguero. He scores a lot of goals, but not. Uh, I don't really rate him as a world 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 class striker. I know Sergio Aguero is probably uh, much better, but I never rate. I always thought that he's overrated. He only scores in the Premier League, and nowhere else really. That's my unpopular opinion. I have a similar feeling about Timo Werner. So with that draw, I think Dortmund will breathe a sigh of relief because neither Bayern nor Leipzig they just go a point ahead, and now. 43 Bayern, 42 Leipzig. It still looks like Bayern's to lose at the moment, but let's see how it will. They have to go to Dortmund. Dortmund is now four points behind. It's probably, yeah, they could have used at least a point in Leverkusen. Gladbach with a win can draw level with Leipzig again, and then we have a pretty exciting race. Leverkusen for now leapfrogs Schalke. 
uh, Freiburg inches closer to Hoffenheim. Frankfurt is slowly moving up where, where Wolfsburg is. They had a great start, but Wolfsburg is um, unfortunately trending down downwards. I'm very sad because the coach of Wolfsburg used to be the last coach for the past four years up until this season. I really wish him a lot of luck. I wish he would have gone to a different club, to be honest. Union moving up, uh, Augsburg down, Köln. Without having played, thanks to Hertha's loss, is moving up. That's that's funny. And Düsseldorf, with uh, that point in Wolfsburg, is also moving out of out of the relegation zone into the playoff zone. We're now very very in there. Uh, and Paderborn is also getting points. So those last three, I think, are the are the ones that we will be talking about when it comes to relegation. Um, I decided to skip now uh, League 1 and we go straight into the uh, low countries. Again, in Belgium a lot was cancelled. We have a few makeup games on Wednesday and Thursday, which I should have probably included in the What to Watch video. I have it here. Uh, we have Ghent against Anderlecht ended 1-1. And then, yeah, the big game standard uh, Club Bruges uh, was moved. So uh, Ghent moves a little bit up, but uh, nothing really big. In the Netherlands, also, all big games got cancelled, uh, except for PSV against Willem Dwe, and it's a sign of life for PSV, winning 3-0. And now they are only a point behind Willem Dwe, but, you know, all the others still have to play. I don't have any makeup results for Utrecht Ajax and AZ against Feyenoord yet remains to be seen. And that leaves us with the Austrian Cup, which, <laughs> what can I say, it was... Uh, round full of surprises um, although if a team that's near the top of the second division plays a top a team that's near the bottom of the first division in St. Pölten Innsbruck that this goes to penalties uh, is probably not the biggest of surprise the way this game was going though uh, was rather exciting it has to be said uh, because uh, there were two um, goals in stoppage time to uh, make it 2-2 uh, uh, as after the first half, let me just see. Uh, we had uh, that um, Innsbruck took a lead in four forty first with a nice uh, back heeled goal. Luxbacher with a pen penalty e e equalized. Then St. Pölten gets the lead in stoppage time nine ninety first, but Innsbruck in the ninety sixth manages to equalize. And then again ninety um, fourth goal for St. Pölten and in the one hundred twentieth uh, Satin with a penalty equalizes so absolutely crazy 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 game and then yeah uh one Sarkolton player misses uh the third one his nickname is Messi he's called Messner and um Innsbruck hits all the penalties Lustenau against Tirol uh almost similar story but I think this was a little bit of a bigger surprise but you know Lustenau had the home game uh this time so again the lower league team wins uh, because um, big Stefan Meyerhofer, who has been a semi-star in Austria, he's now back every 39 years, he misses the final penalty. Last Sturm was the big matchup in that round, and I have to say, uh, it was not a great game uh, to watch, at least at least the first time you could see. It's the first game of the season. Teams need, need, need to, to get going. Sturm is very much... On the defensive, trying to hold down and keep Lasket Bay were dangerous though on the counter, but in the end, all the actions of note were from Lask. And I have to say, um, Klaus with a nice shot hits the post, and then a little bit later, Goeginger with also a nice shot just over. Those, those were the big two scenes in the first half. In the second half, Lask really ground down uh, Sturm. Last playing only with the reserve goal, goalkeeper and the main midfield man also out with, with the flu. So you could see there was maybe not the nicest fluid in, in the squad, but you know, it is working well. And after a really nice cross, uh, Klaus heads home. Laskin has chances to make it two, if not three nil, but never can kind of get the goal. Then Sturm scores the equalizer, but offside is given and uh, rightly so the free kick uh, there was already a player off, off, offside and it's defended by last lot of there are three players in front of the last goalkeeper clearly uh, obstructing him 
and then in stoppage time Balic gets the 2 nil and sets Lask into the semi-final. And last game, Amstetten loses at home to Salzburg, kind of expectedly 3-0, didn't see much of the game. Unfortunately, now the semi-finals, we will have, we had two teams of the second league and uh, two, and the, first, the best two teams in Austria, at least at least the moment. And unfortunately, Salzburg has a home game against Lask in the, in the semi-finals, Lustner home game against Innsbruck. Uh, so yeah, what can I say, I'm not very happy about the draw. If uh, home field advantage was reversed, I think I would be very, 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 very happy. But, you know, that game we also have at the weekend. Well, that's it for me for now for the Central European Leagues that I wanted to um, summarize. One last thing. Uh, this last jersey is not only one because it's white. This was from the 98 season, the Reebok jersey, but it has a connection to Germany. Number 20, Peter Stöger who played for Lask for a year and he was of course a long time coach in Kern so and Dortmund as well for half a season so at least a little bit of connection to the Bundesliga there as well I'm gonna do the uh, Iberian Peninsula next and then finish it up with probably tomorrow I'm not sure if I will get the Iberian thing in too, but uh, I will finish it up then with Serie A and Liga and all the other that were in there. Still have to get over a certain result. Anyway, let me know what you watched in Premier League, Bundesliga, all the leagues that we covered here. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye!